live from Los Angeles. Welcome back to Good Morning, Lala. This woman inspires me. I can't lie. I mean, we're on Wealth Wednesday, and our greatest wealth is our creative factor, all the above. Dan Allen, you are a filmmaker, creative artist. You do jewelry. You're helping cure addiction. What don't you do? I mean, seriously, <laughs> look at you. You're fabulous. I don't know. I'm a mom, too. Oh, yeah? And I funny thing is I just got back from Burning Man. Oh, oh wow. yes. Yeah. Good for you. So I have many parts to myself. And what was amazing, though, is coming back from Burning Man and then yesterday closing my store that I've had for 38 years in Santa Monica. Oh, so wow. I'm transitioning literally from being a jeweler full time to putting all of my efforts into the arts and art collecting wow. and supporting young artists that are Right, right before they're emerging artists, so unknown artists, and um, yeah, and traveling and having fun. Right, and you're a burner yeah. now, so yeah, and I'm yeah. a burner. I know, it's a, I really killed it. Everybody <laughs> said yeah. I did. I had a great time. <laughs> yeah. You are a true Renaissance woman. I'm wondering, though, what was your journey to becoming? Ah, oh, wow. Well, it's funny. Like Ed, I was born in the San Fernando Valley, mm -hmm. um, to parents who were. Um, very creative, and my grandfather, as a matter of fact, made 60 silent films in Los Angeles oh, wow. at Gower Studios, all silent, so very few people know of him. But I have that history um, of being creative. So from that point, I literally started listening to dreams about why I lived in a clamshell under the sea, and I, this idea of treasure hunting and being a jeweler and loving beautiful things was just profoundly um, part of my life. So I, I seem to manifested that over word, overused word into a lot of things. But you truly are a, a treasure hunter. I saw a video that you discovered a real Picasso. Yes, okay, I, I love that, yeah. So <laughs> on my, I know, I, I collected art from early on, but on my honeymoon in the south of France, I walked into a teeny little shop and I was looking through the racks and I found a beautiful little painting that I loved and an art dealer came over right behind me and said, young lady, if you don't buy that right now, there's two of them. They're by Picasso, made for a restaurant um, menu cover as a friend, uh, for a friend of his. And I bought one. And it was $500. And at the time, it was a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And it's a print, but it's still oh. amazing. And it, and it is a typical great story. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's yeah. fantastic. That yeah. is fascinating. So now what? So now you're, you close the shop. Yeah, I'm closing the shop, but I'm not going to completely give up on jewelry as a career because I have so many people that um, know me for mm -hmm. custom and one of a kind. So I'm going to remain in the business in some way, mm -hmm. but I'm also going to bring my daughter into my business because she, um, I, she's amazing. She's a, a, a goth, a Victorian Gothic mm -hmm. girl who has created a line of jewelry using human teeth and animal bones. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. She is purgatory plaything, and you have to know her and look her up. She's pretty amazing. It's just a different manifestation of what I do. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and then maybe I use the, the, my um, business as a pop-up store. Oh, so wow. the story is I own the, the property where I am, and so I don't want to just close it. Yeah, I want to yeah. cont but, so, but I'm more thing. Yeah. yeah, evolve. You, you know what's yeah. so fascinating about uh, you, among many things, is that you're multi-passionate, you're multi-talented. Has it been difficult Thanks. making decisions like moving in a different direction in terms of your business or career over the course mm -hmm. of your life, or is it something that just intuitively you've always felt and you're very clear about? It takes a little time, yeah. but not long. <laughs> I'm pretty intuitive. I, I think of myself as walking away from something I love and how does that feel ah. or, or you know, closing the door or opening another one. And so, so I'm you kind sort of, of play it out. And I do. It. I do. And I feel it. And I'm also doing about four things at the same time right now. Yeah, and so, so I'm figuring out which one is really leading me. Talk to us about curing addiction. So this is an interesting story. Um, before my husband passed away, we befriended a handyman that came to our home with a uh, left a note on the gate saying we clean. I clean fountains. And my husband thought, that's so interesting. You know, yeah, people in our, my neighborhood have fountains. So <laughs> we, we called him, we brought him in, and he was this lovely man that my friend, uh, my husband befriended, and he had lost both his parents from an overdose of heroin mm. and had this idea to open up some harm um, reduction care centers. Basically, it used to be called methadone centers. Mm -hmm. And we did it six years ago after my husband died. In his honor, I funded. Wow. So I now own seven of them. We see a thousand patients a day. And we basically have a really high level of care in terms of how they're wow. um, helped through their daily existence. And keeping people alive is the number one goal. So I'm op one is open in L.A. Mm -hmm. on Chatsworth, mm -hmm. and the other all in Denver. Wow. Yeah, so again, it's just kind of the miraculousness of the timing yeah. and the desire 
to, to do it. So you're a big entrepreneur. That's yes. really what I mean, it is. I've like, always been an entrepreneur. But, yeah, you've, I, but you've got great, you know, this deep sort of kind of creative spirit, but also this entrepreneurial spirit, which you often don't see in the same person. You yeah. often see most people over index for one or the other. Mm -hmm. You seem to have this beautiful harmony and sort of sync. That's so sweet. I, I just do what comes along that grabs my attention and feels good. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I love the arts and I love, um, you know, I love my life. I'm in a really good place right now. It's pretty mm -hmm. exciting. I love your earrings. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. I, have to say. I know. Yes. They're blue geodes, like little oh, small oh, geodes. Are cut in half. So I was looking at your ring. We have very similar. Yes. Yeah. Little oh, wonder my, we're almost matching. Look here. Yes. 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 This is something I bought in Greece. I think I was 17 or 18 from La Launus, which is one of the oldest Greek jewelers, and I just felt so excited that I you could still walk have it. in, and I still Amazing. have it. Amazing! I wear it's it a brand lot. New. I know I wear it a lot. It's incredible! Amazing. I don't anyway. have friends from that. <laughs> yeah. I don't. I don't. I don't think I have any friends left from seventeen. Years ago. I, yeah. I think it's so interesting too that you mentioned you're a treasure hunter. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I think the the jewelry for me um, is part of that. It's part of having seen beautiful things on my grandmother's wrist and wanting and loving it. And I started to go to London when I was very, very young, like 19, 20, staying at the Holiday Inn on just a bare minimum and going to the antique markets at six in the morning to find antique carved things that I could turn into jewelry. Mm -hmm. So specifically, there were mother of pearl carvings that were used for games like bridge and quadrille and whist and all that. I didn't know much about it. I could go on forever about it, but it's boring. Um, except for they're beautiful and I framed them in gold. And part, the part of my business in the beginning of being a jeweler was those items. So that literally was treasure hunting. And you're right? literally treasure hunting for artists. Yes, and now I'm treasure hunting. Exactly. Thank you. That's exactly where it came from, is buying art all of my life and doing the Venice art walk and things back in the 70s and meeting all the artists in Venice that are all so huge now, um, you know, has really flavored that next part of my life, which I think really is about promoting new artists. Mm -hmm. And how can we as a culture continue to support new emerging artists? Well, like I said, and like I've said in the past, and I still say, I think if you find art you love, it doesn't matter who it is. And if you're helping them pay the rent, you know, literally there's so many artists that I love and that's such a huge thing. And again, I think they have to have something, you know, that I want to support and um, grow, but usually it starts with just seeing something in somebody and their passion and mm -hmm. wanting wanting to be helpful. You certainly have an eye for that je ne sais quoi. Uh, there you go. And by <laughs> the way, the reason that I think I started with the jewelry hunting I just remembered was a dream I had that I lived in a shell under the ocean. And every day when the shell opened up, I went out and treasure hunted. And it was like a reoccurring childhood oh, dream. Wow. And so it sounds funny, but I think you listen to those kinds of things. Beautiful. At least I do. Sounds like it'd be a good film. There yes, you go. actually. It's a cute one. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Diane, for sharing oh, your story. You're so welcome. We're Thank so you for having me. We're so excited to continue oh, yeah. to watch you and it's, your daughter flourish. There you go. Thank you. Santa sure. Monica. Please tell everyone where they can find and follow you. Absolutely. They can find and follow me at Diane Allen 23 or Diane Allen Presents. And my daughter, if I could plug her, is Purgatory Playthings on Etsy and also on Instagram. Love it. Thank yeah. you so much. Thank you so much. Good morning, Wildland.